our speaker is Tom Aldrich. We're very happy to have him. Uh, Tom I was did not um, grow up in Grand Prairie. He grew up in the Park City area. He was born in Denton, grew up in the Park Cities area, attended, uh, well, graduated from Highland Park High School. Uh, he got his degrees from uh, the University of Tennessee at Knoxville and the University of Dallas in Irving. He is married. Uh, he has three children. He has a multitude of um, grandchildren and grand nieces and nephews, a whole bunch of them, almost as many as I do. <laughs> but anyway, Tom purchased this, uh, the Antioch Life Cemetery as a, an investment and then uh, a real estate investment. And then he got to, I guess, reading about the history of it, and he wanted to bring this cemetery to life. So today he's going to tell us about when he received, got the land, and what he, what has happened between the time he purchased and today. So, Tom, I'm going to turn it over to you. Let you tell us all about these neat things. Thank you. I'm be using this. Okay. It's on. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, Glad all of y'all could be here. It's not every day that you get to talk about a cemetery and say it with heart and love, but um, we're going to talk about Antioch Life Park Cemetery today. And it's been through several renditions. And to help me out in this discussion, I've invited Angela Lucky to kind of talk about the parts that she has better knowledge of than I do. But um, I think this, this will be entertaining. And we do want to uh, answer questions that anybody has about this cemetery and its history. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, what we're looking at here is the entryway that we had constructed when we bought the cemetery. It, uh, we felt like it needed its own presence and so we had a few dollars that allowed us to put this together one of the things i like to tell people about this photograph is you all are familiar with the naval air station in grand prairie and the fact that the chinook helicopters fly training missions in and out of there all the time and this view our marketing picture is this same view and we have a picture of a chinook helicopter flying in the background <laughs> and people tell me what's that bug on the screen and I have to tell them that's not a bug that's people training in helicopters so all right so what my knowledge is about this is in the early days of North Texas a lot of people were coming here because land was um, easy to obtain and uh, in this case, the, the grants of land were being made by what were called the Peters Colony. Um, this mapping shows the entire dimension of all of the land that was being granted under the Peters Colony uh, conditions, so the conditional, or I'm not sure exactly how they uh, pronounce it, but as far as Antioch life Park's origination, we're focusing down in this area, which is the confluence of the West Fork of the Trinity River and Mountain Creek Lake. Um, the Jordan family came from Tennessee, and this was a part of this entire area of what their interest was to settle in uh, North Texas. So I want to see a show of hands of everybody in this room that knows that at 710 miles in length, the Trinity River is the longest river in the United States that flows within a single state. Who knew that? So now you know, and now you can, now you can win that drinking bet. <laughs> 710, and I think that's from the West Fork. So anyway, 
the migrations uh, were influenced obviously by the grant of the land, but also about um, opportunity. And in North Texas, uh, obviously, there was plenty of opportunity to farm and ranch and establish businesses and conduct commerce and uh, build roads and do all of these things because Texas at the time was, was a growing uh, population. A lot of people came from Tennessee. Uh, David Jordan, as it turns out, came from Rutherford County, Tennessee, which is southeast of Nashville. If you've ever been to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, that's essentially where Rutherford County is based. And he married a woman from west central Tennessee who was from Gibson County. Her last name was Height, and now we know Jordan Height is the name of the family cemetery at the northern end of the, the uh, property that he purchased. Now, the marriage records indicate they got married in 1852 and immediately began their migration to North Texas to take advantage of the Peters Colony land grants. There might be some uh, indication that she received a dowry that might have had something to do with them having the opportunity, the resources to come to Texas and finance this purchase and begin their lives here together. So Jordan Heights Cemetery um, is where they are buried, but it's interesting to know that we do have Jordans, and we do have Heights buried at Antioch Life Park Cemetery. Now, we don't have a trace other than we know that certain slaves of the Jordans are, and their descendants are buried there, which may tell us about the Jordan side of it, but the Heights, we don't, we don't know where they came from. So, if we get out our rulers and our tape measures, and we look at this picture. Um, the Peters Colony grants were based on sections of land, and a section of land is a square mile, and a square mile contains 640 acres of land. And as a head of household, a Peters Colony land grant recipient could obtain 640 acres of land. Um, the, the grants were approved in 1852, and due to some issues between the people that were governing Texas at the time and the company that had come in, purchased, and set up the sales of the land grants, the certificates of ownership were delayed until 1853. But those dates coincide with what we know about David Jordan and Elizabeth Height coming to what is now Grand Prairie to um, settle on their section of land and get it started. This picture, raises the first question we have about where their land actually was. This is the Jordan Height Cemetery location, and this is the Antioch Life Park Cemetery location. Now, with a section of land being a square mile, this distance is actually closer to two miles. So one of our questions is, if this was on Jordan property, and this was also considered to be on Jordan property, how, how could that be with that amount of distance? Well, other research tells us that these sections, these grants, weren't always exactly a square mile, because back in the day, the surveying wasn't the technology that we have today, and you might have a narrower and taller section 
versus a wider and thinner section. That's just a guess of what might be happening here based on how far apart those two cemeteries are. But both are considered to have been part of the Jordan family. John, I'll tell you what, okay. my arm is going to... <laughs> All right, so the next step in getting from there to here. The families were settling in the 1850s, but here comes the Civil War, and Texas, as we know, had been an independent republic, joined with the Union. The Civil War came, the Texas seceded from the Union, joined the Confederacy, um, and even though it was in the Confederacy and it was a slave state, Texas was on the, the fringe and really didn't participate that much in the Civil War. There were no significant battles here. The main role of the state of Texas was volunteers for the Confederate Army, horses, supplies, and a little bit of the landing of the ships in Galveston Bay. But other than that, it, it was kind of separated from it. Um, Proclamation 95, the Emancipation Proclamation, was issued September of 1862. In 1863, the proclamation was amended to free all of the slaves in the Confederate States and on April 9th, Robert E. Lee surrenders his army to Ulysses S. Grant, thereby ending the war. However, Texas being so far out from the action, the word about the war being over and the slaves being freed, freed took a while to get here. Indeed, the very last battle of the Civil War was uh, was fought in, what, what do I have the date here, May 12th, even though Lee had surrendered a month before. So at that point, it was just about the word being put out that the war was over, the nation was going to heal, and on June 19th, 1865, Major General Gordon Granger landed in Galveston to tell the people of Texas that the war was over and the slaves had been freed and were moving forward that day, became known as Juneteenth, and it is now a national holiday. So David Jordan freed his slaves and in addition gave them 50 acres of land to start their lives, their freed lives on. And one of our questions is we'd, we'd like to know if there is an exact date on which he declared his slaves freed. We think that's an important date to know. Um, we have in the records anecdotally that Mose Jordan, what I call his primary slave, was the first freedman in Dallas County. Once again, we have that in historic records that we've received, but we'd love to get documentation of that. We think that would be excellent uh, information to know. Going back to the map about where the Antioch Cemetery is in relation to the Jordan Heights Cemetery, the uh, 50 acres of land that David Jordan gave to his freed slaves would appear to be at the southern end of the property. And from that, the freedmen built a community before Grand Prairie that uh, basically wound up along what are now the western shores of Mountain Creek Lake. That community became known as Freetown and in the main street of that community, there was an establishment of homes and buildings called The Line, which was 
essentially the main street of Freetown. And the community gathering place was the Livestone Masonic Lodge. And this is where the freedmen met and began things like instruction and education and building their own community, their governance. And it wasn't until 1877 that Grand Prairie, or at least the United States Post Office, was established. So Freetown predated Duckman and Grand Prairie. Now, one of the most important pieces of history that comes out of what we know about how Freetown was settled is the Livestone Masonic Lodge. And this is a summary of information about it. And everywhere there's a highlight, I can tell you is a reference to what now is Antioch Life Park Cemetery or a burial record that we have for people. And in the main street of that community, there was an establishment of homes and buildings called The Line, which was essentially the main street of Freetown. And the community gathering place was the Livestone Masonic Lodge. And this is where the freedmen met and began things like instruction and education and building their own community, their governance. And it wasn't until 1877 that Grand Prairie, or at least the United States Post Office, was established. So Freetown predated Duckman and Grand Prairie. Now, one of the most important pieces of history that comes out of what we know about how Freetown was settled is the Livestone Masonic Lodge. And this is a summary of information about it. And everywhere there's a highlight, I can tell you is a reference to what now is Antioch Life Park Cemetery or a burial record that we have for people at Antioch Life Park Cemetery. And Angela is going to talk a little bit more about this, but this is from a summary that I got from her. And these are people that we know have burial records or known to be buried at Antioch Life Park. But Freetown, the line, the Livestone Masonic Lodge is all a very, very important part of the history. And this cemetery is a part of that history. Now, Antioch the Cemetery, Antioch St. John's the Cemetery was dedicated in 1881. However, once again, looking at some of the records, burials were occurring in or near this cemetery before then because people that owned land had family members, people that they knew that died, in this case, probably their slaves. They had to have a place to bury them. And that was always reserved. Texas is replete with small community and family cemeteries on property all over the place. That's how this got started. And we do know that there were burials that were being had out there probably as early as the 1850s. As soon as people started moving here for the Peters Colony grants, people began to be buried. This is also interesting. In the, in the notes, there was um, the O'Donnell family were they the purchasers of the acreage that became Antioch? Um, we're not sure if they were Catholic, but 
there were notes about a Catholic church was planned on this property. And I grew up a Catholic in Dallas County, and my family knew the, the Catholic diocese, people that ran the diocese pretty well. So I checked with them to find out if they had any record of a Catholic church being established or planning to be established on what is now the Antioch Cemetery property. Their records date back to the 1840s when a church was established in Corsicana, which became the first church of the Catholic diocese. They don't have a record that there was any church planned for this property. Um, Mose Jordan Jr. is buried in Antioch, but Mose Jordan Sr., the presumed first freedman of Dallas County, is buried at the White Rock Garden of Memory Cemetery out in far north Dallas. That cemetery is less than a mile from where I lived as a younger man. I went out to visit. Uh, it's a gated cemetery, and so you have to go in when the custodians open. And I spent a morning out there, took the tour, and then examined the entire cemetery. I could not find a marker for Mose Jordan Sr. And the gentleman that manages the cemetery did not have a record or did not, couldn't tell me for sure if he was there. And this is another question that we would like to get answered as to where exactly Mose Jordan Sr. is buried. The oldest record that we have at Antioch is 1943. Now, we, we the burials obviously had been occurring before then, but the oldest written record that's been preserved is 43. And as it says here, it's also been called other cemeteries. At this point, I'm gonna turn the discussion over to Angela and talk a little bit about the community. And Angela, if you would. Is that okay? Yeah, you can just stay where I, I Before I start speaking, I just want to um, do a public acknowledgement to all the work, all the love, all the care that uh, Mr. Tom Aldrich have really put into the cemetery, what, what it looked like then and what it actually looks like now. Because this is a cemetery, um, Antioch, that most of my family members um, are buried there. Um, going back to my great greats and so forth. And the south of Antioch Cemetery that's there, like many people say, well, we know they're out there, and we know that we've had an opportunity uh, working with Mr. Aldrich to record the people that are what we consider to be the new part of Antioch Cemetery. There was actually an older part that outdate the newer part of the graves, which is further to the south of the property that Mr. Aldridge actually owned. But somehow, with selling property, um, land got sold, the property got sold, and the human remains still um, are buried there on the property that's closely next to Antioch Cemetery. And that's where a lot of the older graves are. And um, when you go to that location, there are so many um, trees, and it's almost like it reminds me like um, it becoming like a, a like a dumping site because the other day I was out there um, because this is Black History Month. There's like tires and trash and things like that. So I'm hoping that being a part of the Big Thought Program with Grand Prairie that we can get some volunteers to uh, maybe where we can reach out to the family that actually owned that because I had an opportunity to speak with one of the daughters that live in Denver. I know that's interested um, in probably selling that property, which is next to the cemetery. Um, and, I'm, and I'm hoping it that Mr. Aldrich ends up with that because I know that there's more veterans buried there and there's more family members 
that's on that side. And I would just like to see those people that's buried on that side really be laid to rest the right way, the proper way. But a lot of times when you get into people only pro private property, it's sometimes kind of hard for the state to actually go over and say, hey, you know, you got people there, but can't really do anything. So I witnessed firsthand what Mr. Aldred have done with what we known as um, Antioch Cemetery, where a lot of the Grand Prairie um, black families was actually buried because that was the location where the families lived, where they um, actually um, attended school and had worship. Now, there was a slide that he shared with you earlier that mentioned Iola Reed Smith, that was the person Ruthie Jackson was interviewing on the audio tape. That is my father's grandmother, so that would make her my great-great-grandmother. And the reason I'm standing here is because of her father, and her father's name was Frederick Douglas Reed, and he went by Fred Douglas Reed. He died here in Grand Prairie on April the 21st of 1943. And I had a copy of his obituary that I sent to Mr. Aldridge on his phone this morning. And um, some of the people that spoke at his funeral that gave the resolution was Professor um, David Daniels. And um, Reverend Casey was the one that did the, the eulogy. So it kind of gives you an idea of earlier African Americans that were like here. And then when you start going back um, and Frederick Douglass Reed with his, with his family that were already here in Grand Prairie because Frederick Douglass Reed was um, on the census listed as a mulatto. His dad was white and his mother was um, black Indian. And so he's listed as a mulatto. If you guys know about the tiny little cemetery at Grand Prairie High School, there's like a little grave there. Those are Frederick Douglass Reed's children. He was the one driving the wagon somewhere around here, and his wagon collided with an inner urban train that came through. And so those are his kids. That's, that's buried over there. But um, some, some of the ones that we have been able, and there's a lot of famous people that are actually out in Antioch. <laughs> These are the ones that, you know, we're kind of like listing now that Mr. Aldred have taken the time to list, and that's because he cares about, he cares about families, care about people and so forth, because being a real estate investor, he could have did whatever he wanted to do, or he could have just threw his hand up and say, this is not what I want, and could have passed it, passed it on to someone else. That's been the history of this cemetery. The ownerships have changed. And he's the first one that I can say in my living, working with the cemetery, that for an owner that really cared about the cemetery. And that's why I like really working with him. But Tyree Taylor... He's buried there, and Tyree Taylor um, actually was like, he, he lived like down like in your um, Bear Creek area and so forth, but he is the father of Charlie Taylor, that we knew that Charlie Taylor lived here in Grand Prairie, and he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Mr. Taylor is still living, um, so that's his father, and his father is there at Antioch. Um, when Mr. Charlie Taylor was in good health, when he would come to Grand Prairie, it was my honor to drive him out to Antioch Cemetery um, to pay respect to his dad that's out there. And so, you know, I took pictures of him standing over his father's grave and so forth. You also have Charles McMillan. He's the first African-American president of the National Associ Association of Realtors, um, also a veteran that is, that's buried out there. You have Eddie Bernice Johnson. Um, she's, you know, our current congresswoman for District 30. She just recently um, announced that she was no longer going to run for District 30. And her sister is Sally Moore. Many of you in Grand Prairie know her sister. Sally Moore, retired associate superintendent with, with Grand Prairie. But Ms. Moore, history is that David Daniels, Professor David Daniels, he was here, and Ms. Moore was actually hired by him to come in as a school teacher. Uh, Ms. Moore was my parents' school teacher, my mom and my dad's school teacher. And um, Professor David Daniels, he was my elementary principal. I actually attended Dalworth Elementary School, so he was my principal in the first grade. But they actually have family members that are buried at Antioch. 
the Congresswoman Johnson and Sally Moore, they have family members that are actually out there at Antioch as well. Uh, Ms. Moore actually uh, owns um, plots out there at Antioch, and I was speaking to her a few weeks back to find out, you know, do you now do you plan to go to Antioch since they now have the city of Grand Forest Cemetery? So you still have a lot of individuals that purchase to be buried at Antioch, and this is before the city of Grand Forest actually built its own cemetery. Um, she didn't really, she doesn't really know. She didn't like, you know, hadn't really like decided if she was going to or not. Because actually, I mean, I was trying to get the plots from her. You know, she wasn't going to go out there if she no longer had use for them. Um, Williams, 37 people with a certain name of Williams are buried at Antioch Life, Life Park Cemetery. Um, the what What's so profound about the cemetery is that um, one of the slides where you saw with the Masonic Lodge, one of the slides that you that Mr. Aldridge um, sh shared with us was the Masonic Lodge, and that Masonic Lodge is where the education was taught. This is where the children received their education, and later on, that house, the Masonic Lodge house, was actually moved right here across the railroad track, right here in the Dalworth community. But once it came to the Dalworth um, community, being that the Masonic Lodge had not been taken care of, then it became what neighbors considered to be an eyesore. Instead of trying to get money to restore it because it had history there, that building ended up getting demolished. It got demolished, and um, there is a state historical marker that's on the, on the land that's there, but the house was, was demolished once it was moved here once it um, was moved. Um, I'm really passionate about the cemetery because also of the veterans. Um, I'm thinking, Tom, what was it, August, October? Anywhere between the time frame of August and November 2021, I did three flights to Washington, D.C., um, going up there to be an advocate for the cemetery because of the veterans that are buried there. Um, these veterans um, that outdate all the way back to World War One, World War Two, Vietnam vets, um, and they're recorded. You know, they're recorded with the National Cemetery um, Administration. I had an opportunity to speak with his executive directors there because my concern is that how do you have so many veterans at one location, and then when we pay respect to the veterans, and you literally, if you stand on Antioch property, you can look across the lake, Mounds Creek Lake, and you can see the flags flying on Veterans Day or Memorial Day. And so my question to um, the National Cemetery Administration is, you know that the veterans now lay here. You all have the records. Um, and actually, I was there to advocate for resources um, to help Antioch Cemetery. But again, you know, we caught up into the way that the government operates. You know, anything that is probably on, um, the government does not get involved and so forth. And I just think that's so disheartened for individuals that um, have served our country honorably. And because there was not a Dallas Fort Worth Veterans Cemetery during that time, um, these veterans are there. And because of the amount of veterans that are there, any, any place you have more than 100 veterans, um, somebody should have the same type of heart that Mr. Aldred have. Mm -hmm. So he makes sure on Memorial Day and Veterans Day that the veterans um, are recognized. Um, he makes sure that he um, put out, and he helped put out, and he actually hired people to come in and put out American flags on every veteran grave um, that has been identified, that have a marker. The National Cemetery Administration did say that any broken headstones that they would be willing to um, replace. Many of these veterans, um, many of these veterans, do not have family members still living. Still, with that, there's a cost because you have to the labor. You have to, you know, put these things down and so forth. So, so far, Mr. Aldred has um, has incurred all of that and so forth like that. But um, I'm going to turn it back over. To, to Mr. Aldrich, um, but 
again, there's a lot of history there, and I'm appreciative of the history that's there because that's what keeps me going to our library because in the city of Grand Prairie, you know that they have um, they have ancestry that's on there. So usually what I do is I sit there and I take a look at, let's see who's at Antioch. Let's pull the census. Let's look at their families and let's start creating a file that way. And then let's go f backwards to know exactly like how the people ended up, you know, migrating to the city of Grand Prairie. May I comment, Angela, uh, and I want to uh, thank you for enlightening us on that, kind of giving us a bigger picture, because it seems to me about two months ago, this was on the news, uh, at, at least they mentioned a, a local Grand Prairie cemetery, and they didn't really give, they kind of pointed out the problems with the markers and the headstones and stuff, but I don't think they really gave the full, the solution, and, and more importantly in terms of what Tom's doing in terms of putting the flags out and all that. Uh, it seemed like, it, I, I think it was on CBS 11 a couple months ago, and they, they might need a follow-up or something on that because the, the problems were pointed out, but I don't think they fully addressed what's your, yeah, what solutions were being implemented and of course the research that was being done with the federal government and now kind of a hold up is really on the part of the federal government with all the usual protocol and and all the paperwork and all that. So uh, I just want to make sure we're down. So I see it was this the cemetery that they were? It was. Okay, I thought it was. Have you, are you ready for another slide? Yes. <laughs> 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 We, um, I think we've gotten more coverage about the veterans' graves at Antioch than any other cemetery other than Dallas National. Um, let me get to that question because what Angela just talked about and this step leads to the answers to the questions about the veterans. It's, it's a little known fact that Antioch had the indigent burials of Dallas County for six years. Southland Cemetery had it on either side of that for a number of other years. Dallas County was burying its indigent people in Grand Prairie. And there is so much history in that in and of itself. Uh, we've determined that we became highly diversified during that period. And the surnames of the people that are buried there bear this out. It's, it's a cornucopia of individuals who, for one reason or another, died on the streets. The, the county was responsible for them. They had no identification. It, it, whatever the reason was, Dallas County didn't have a, a next of kin. They didn't have anybody that wanted to claim them because they didn't know who they were. Well, they got buried at Antioch. And to this day, we get phone calls from people saying, we're looking for so-and-so. And for us, if we have a name, that's great. It's rare, though. We really hope that they've done their research because Dallas County assigned a case number to every one of those burials. And those records are pretty reliable. And so if we can get a case number, we can find where that person is buried and that family member, whoever is looking for them, if we don't have a name, now we can get a name and we can put that into our cemetery records. And for anybody else that is looking for that person, if they look in Antioch or find a grave, now we'll be able to tell them that yes, they are here and this is where they are buried. And we've had so many people that have found loved ones. And what typically happens is we say they're buried right here. They place a permanent marker so that people coming to the cemetery can find them. And, and it's, there are quite a few veterans that were buried as indigents who wound up with markers. 
Um, the other thing I find amusing about the cemetery is the names that people received. We've got people with given names of Congress, Governor, Judge, Ben Franklin, and ex -Lone. And it's a lot of fun, but honestly, about the indigent burials, there's so many of them, nobody's looking for them. Nobody is ever gonna care about them. And so in addition to the veterans, we wanna honor these, these people because they were human beings, they had lives, they fell on hard times, whatever the case may be, and they wound up at Antioch. And we need people to know about them. So the veterans, when we bought the cemetery, uh, like you were saying, this was a real estate play <laughs> that didn't work out. Not all real estate plays work out, but as we dug into the history, I have three partners, they're all women. They all have much bigger hearts than I do, but they designated me as the manager for the cemetery. We got to looking at the number of markers that were for veterans and we're going, wow, and they were dating back to World War I. But there's no question that the condition of the markers was was failing. And so over the years, as we managed our memorials on Memorial Day and Veterans Day, we established GoFundMe accounts. We invited volunteers to come help us. Um, we, would, we would pay people when we could afford to help us put out the flags. Well, uh, Channel 11, is the station, a fellow by the name of J.D. Miles is the reporter, has kind of taken us under his wing. And this past November, uh, they did a report about the veterans at Antioch. And we had just come from putting out the flags and photographing and doing all that. And they showed up and we didn't even know they were coming. And fortunately, Angela called me and said, they're about to tape, can you get out here? And I live 45 minutes away. So I hopped in the car and ran out here. And what we were able to take from that airing was uh, quite a number of companies and individuals that donated to Antioch directly and to two separate GoFundMe accounts. And we've never had much money to be able to do anything about these veterans markers. However, we got blessed this time around with this report. And we, we took the monies that we received and we have allocated, we've escrowed those monies because the only money that's gonna be spent out of that escrow is on the improvement of these markers. And I picked up a marker last week from a found, from a uh, monument company at Traders Village. Is that what it's called? He was a vet. He saw the story. He had placed some monuments at Antioch. He calls me up and he says, I want to help. And I said, good. I'm going to bring you a bronze, you know, and, and I'm going to give you some money. Mount it. So I picked that up from him. There's a foundry in Fort Worth, we had two markers that were, one was missing and the other was damaged beyond repair, but we had pictures of them. We gave those pictures to the foundry and this week we're picking up two more veterans markers with new bronzes on granite and those are going to be placed in those, in their graves. And we're asking, we're hoping to have J.D. Miles come back out when we do that setting as a follow-up. And we also have some other money now that's going to allow us, we have a number of veterans monuments that the VA gave them their bronze plaques, but they don't give them the, the mounting base. They don't give them the granite. So we've identified about 10 or 12 of those plates that are just sitting on the ground. And we're gonna pull them up and we're gonna buy granite 
and we're going to have them affixed to granite and replace them so that those bronze markers will have a good base to be resting on. And we're just going to go through the rest of the cemetery and find veterans markers that need that care. And we're going to do it. And next Veterans Day, November 11th, we'll be proud to show anybody that wants to come see and that we are making the effort to honor these veterans as well as we can. And if we get some help from the federal government, that would be great. But the story of the veterans at Antioch is its pretty amazing. We have so many World War I burials there. It's, it's fantastic. OK, so very quick. And I know we're out of time, but thank you all for bearing with us. We recognize on Memorial Day. We recognize on Veterans Day. We're, we just recognized on Martin Luther King's birthday, and we're hoping to make that an annual event. Fourth of July, we don't really have an organized event that day because we're competing with all the other Fourth of July events. And so it's difficult to hope that everybody comes out. But we have an informal day of recognition on the Fourth of July. We've been talking about this for years. There's a program called Wreaths Over America. They do it at Dallas National. Angela is correct. We are on exactly the same longitude as Dallas. Na Antioch lies on the same longitude as Dallas National. When they have a flyover, it goes over Antioch. <laughs> and we would like to do wreaths over America. If you don't know this cemetery, it starts at the National Cemetery in Washington at eight, 9 o'clock in the morning. 10 o'clock in the morning. And across each time zone in the United States, all the way out to Hawaii at exactly the same time, the ceremony is held and the veterans are recognized with these wreaths. And if there's a family member associated to that buried veteran, because this happens in December, they receive the wreath and they get to take it home as a decoration for their home for the holidays. And so we think we're at the point now where we can do this, but it requires money because the, the, the wreaths have to be purchased. It's a nonprofit and they take the money from the purchase of the wreaths to fund their operation. So we would look for a sponsor to help us offset that cost to be able to by 93 wreaths to be placed on the veterans' graves. Um, my burial services manager is a Hispanic kid that lives in the neighborhood, and he came up with the idea on Halloween, maybe doing a trunk and treat at, at the cemetery. And I told him we, we might do that. And then because of Black History Month and because of who is buried at Antioch, we need to work a commemorative event in sometime in February. How do we serve the community? Service projects for youth groups, for volunteer groups. We love volunteerism. We have plenty to do. Educational sessions and these commemorative events. Angela's already given me the segue on this. Um, when we bought the cemetery, it, it needed a lot of help. And we thought we were just going to combine and flip. And now we're, now we are telling the story. And that's what we want to do. Um, this veterans project is going to be a big help because we're going to get some positive response to this. And what we want to do is um, we don't, we don't, my partners and I don't think we are the forever owner of Antioch Life Park Cemetery. We think there needs to be an organization whose interest in preserving Antioch and its place in history in Grand Prairie and in North Texas survives us. And so what we are hoping to do is 
um, find interest, raise money and resources, and like this piece of property adjacent where we have a pretty good idea that there's burials there from the days of Freetown, it would make sense to combine those properties into one so that we can continue the recognition of the history and who's buried there, but give Antioch some inventory because we've gotten to the point now where we're paying for ourselves out of operations. It took us a while, but we can now function and focus on things like the Veterans Memorials because we don't ask we don't have to ask for help to get there. And if we had additional inventory, then that forever owner is going to have an economic method by which to survive in order to continue. So the last thing is we're in April. We will celebrate the five year anniversary of having made application to become a historic Texas cemetery. And we will have a dedication ceremony. We don't know when that's gonna be because we got the picture of the plaque. The foundry's finished it. It was supposed to be shipped. And, and I'm waiting, you know, where is it? But we know we don't wanna do this until the COVID restrictions are as compressed down as they can be, and we're not going to do it in the heat of the summer. So we're hoping in the fall we're going to have the opportunity to dedicate Antioch as a historic Texas cemetery and invite everybody and have a great time. So a word of thanks. Angela is at the top of the list. She took us under her wing and she has been our saint and our savior and has given us reason to do what we're doing here. Um, but we have a lot of other people to thank. We have a woman in the neighborhood. Her husband and her family members are all military veterans. And she personally comes out to take care of the veterans' monuments at Antioch by herself. We don't, we don't pay her anything. She spends her own money. And she has been fantastic. And she tells me, okay, I found one that doesn't have a base. And now I can put that on my list of veterans markers that we need to fix. Ro Kappa at South Grand Prairie comes over and prepares the cemetery for Veterans Day. They've been fantastic. The kids love it. They learn a lot um, and they love coming back. VFW Post 2494, they're technically Grand Prairie's VFW Post, but they're in Irving. When we have a veteran burial and the family wants it, they will come out and provide a color guard for that burial. Um, all of our vendors have been very generous in their donations and their help with us. Um, when we do our volunteer events, we've just had a tremendous amount of support from companies and individuals that want to help. Most recently, uh, Amazon has said, we want to help and part of the money that we received to restore veterans monuments came I can't tell you who they are because they asked to be anonymous, but if I told you, you would know them as one of the best known grocery chains in the state of Texas. So everybody on this list, uh, the historic organization, Stephanie, you and Kathy have been great because all of our history, not all of our history, but a great portion it has come from what you all have been able to tell us um, the Historical Commission of Dallas County was very helpful in us getting our plaque approval. Um, GoFundMe, Channel 11, everybody, we appreciate it and we thank you all so much. Is the GoFundMe still operating? 
it is now we've moved all of that money over and that's escrowed for the veterans monuments and we've got the two coming from fort worth we now have uh, 10 of the ones that need the bottoms did you know if it's a bronze marker do you know what you use to make it sparkle You buy ketchup and you smear it all over the bronze because the acid in the tomatoes will dissolve the patina and make the bronze shine. So one of the things we might do is get an industrial supply of tomato <laughs> juice and put it all over <laughs> Anyway, um, we have some questions. We'd love to get some help on these answers. Um, there is a, and Angela, tell me, because you were explaining to me, there is a deed or a map in existence somewhere that shows this part of the Jordan property that became Freetown and shows that portion of the land. And it helps indicate where these other burials on the adjacent property might be. And that will be a vital piece of information for us to know what we need to integrate into Antioch's operation. Have you checked with the Texas Land Grant Office in Austin? I have not. I have done local records, but I haven't checked with them. Um, if there's a map of David Jordan's original property, we'd love to see that. We'd love to get the date if, if it exists when he freed. And we're also looking for uh, an organization that needs a community service project because we have a couple of things we can get people and groups to do, but we've just kind of stubbed our toes on the few that we've been out there trying to attract. So if anybody knows a Boy Scout troop or a church group or somebody that is willing to spend a weekend to come and do a project, we, we have them and we would love the help. And last thing is, if the historical organization wants to keep this, um, we made a list of all the veterans that are buried at Antioch that we know about. And we also have a list of all of the burials at Antioch that we have a record for. If anybody wants to look those up, if they want to add to the list, we can do that. All right. And I know you all are supposed to be meeting, but thank you so much for this time.